What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about photography accessories that I wish I had purchased sooner, things I wish I made the investment on in the very beginning and didn't wait to get, and things that I wish I spent more money on back then because I'm regretting the purchases now. By the way, welcome to the new studio setup. One of the first things you want to invest in is a very inexpensive item and it's a lens hood to basically block any unwanted any unwanted glare, any light coming from the top down or from the side. And I do a majority of my shooting basically going to car shows right now and shooting in broad daylight and when I first started out, a lot of my pictures had awful, awful sun glare coming down and I ruined a lot of photos starting out. Yes, it's part of the learning curve and part of the process about how to actually do better pictures, but right off the bat, this thing was like, I think $8. This is for the Canon 50 that I still have at the moment. It's for sale, but I'm just saying, this thing is like, it's just, they're a dime a dozen and you basically, it's such a necessity when you're shooting in broad daylight and don't want any unwanted light going into your picture. The next thing I recommend getting is a solid tripod. When I first started out, I bought one for $25, like the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, just to get a tripod through the door and to get me started out. Now, yeah, it was great, it's gotten me by, I'm still shooting on it at the moment, but it technically isn't even a tripod. It's more like a stand. The legs at its peak, are probably about four and a half to five inches off the ground and the rest of it's just a long pole. So I've run into a couple problems when I've been shooting outdoors where the wind's hitting it and the thing's wobbling back and forth. I'm afraid about my camera falling over, even with the Canon M50 on it, even with a light camera like that. And now with this camera on there, way too afraid to even have it lifted up more than three feet off the ground on the tripod because I don't want it falling over while I'm filming. So definitely spend the money right off the bat make the investment, get a real tripod to actually have the camera balance. Whatever kind of shooting, it's gonna be beneficial for you. Just, just trust me, just please make the investment. The next thing I recommend that you might not think you need in the very beginning because you might not, but then you definitely will eventually once your arsenal starts to grow is getting a solid camera bag. I basically worked out of an old lunchbox with different pockets in it, stuffed with microfiber towels just to start out, but I realized very quickly I'm gonna need to spend the money on an actual camera bag. Maybe I should have titled this video How to Not Be So Cheap and just buy a damn camera bag. Either way, I finally broke down and spent the money and got an actual camera bag to store my gear and I'm so glad I did because this has come in handy being able to keep my backup SD cards, my battery packs, lens, you know, anything that I need to have in there, towels, things to keep all my stuff in, and for snacks obviously as well, because that's definitely a necessity when you're at a shoot, is to pack snacks. Either way, spend the money, get a good camera bag. I didn't need a massive one to start out, like those big turtle shell, huge camera bags. This works perfectly for me right now. I think I got it for about $40 online. I will tag the link for the product below in the description so you guys can get this one if you do like it. I, I recommend getting a camera bag right off the bat. So the last accessory that I wish I'd bought sooner was a variable ND filter. And I highly recommend this. It has saved me in so many instances. And I gotta tell you, in the very beginning, my photos were absolute garbage from the car shows because I was shooting in direct sunlight at these cars and they were all blown out. Even with my, I was shooting at like F22 and they're still blown out. Basically can adjust the tint on the spot, just like this. Now you don't need to spend a lot of money. This one I have right there is an Earth ND filter and I paid only about $60 for it on B&H. Yes, they do go up pretty expensive for the higher end glass and the higher end products, but this thing has gotten me by so well. I bought one for the Canon 50, I sold that one, I got one for the new camera as well. I highly recommend these things and they're so easy to take on and off if you're not wanting to use it anymore and you're going back indoors, if you're vlogging, whatever the case is, you can take it right off just like that. But see how the image now is more exposed, a little bit overexposed on this side. Put the ND filter back on and you can see it evens right out. I have my ISO set to I believe 100, but see, no blown out nice even tone through everything and I can adjust it on the fly if it gets more sunny in one spot or I'm more shaded. 
Really, it's that simple. Having the ND filter on while you're doing video or a long exposure shot gives you the ability to have your lens wide open at your lowest aperture without having all that light coming in and ruining your shot. I'll post some photos right here from last year's shows when I had no ND filter, no lens hood, and they were completely blown out, and I wasted a lot of time at those shows just taking pictures and having, you know, put the SD card in when I got home and being so disappointed that the photos were absolutely ruined and honestly couldn't really do much in Lightroom to really bring them back without ruining the photo. That's all I got for today guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, please don't forget to smack the like button. It does mean a lot to me and subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you guys in the next one.